what you're going to do is pray over it, okay? I know we're saying we're praying a lot, but you need it. You need the prayer, sis. Okay? Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. My name is Kimberly. I go over all things health and wellness in the name of Jesus Christ, of course. If you clicked on this video, you know we're on part two of this little series of our godly winter arc. Now, if you haven't checked out the last video, I need for you to pause this video, go to that video first so we can lay the foundation for what we're gonna talk about today. Again, this video is gonna serve as a part two so that we can dive deeper into what a godly winter arc should look like for you so that we can finish out this this year strong. We're using this time frame called the winter arc in order for us to develop and grow stronger spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally so that we can prepare ourselves for 2025. Before we dive even deeper into what this winter arc is gonna look like for you, I just wanna give a huge shout out to God. Why? Because I feel like all the Christian conferences and all of those things and concerts and everything are happening around this time. And I feel like when we talk about accountability and just making sure that we're showing up in spaces that are enriching our souls and our beings all together, this is the time to do it. I know currently, it is the Acts 242 conference with Pastor Philip Mitchell, which he is a powerhouse. Um, Megan Ashley, Jackie Hill Perry, and her husband. And I just feel like that conference, even though I'm salty about not being there, that conference for a lot of individuals is probably going to catapult them into what we're talking about today, which is staying on top of our beings so that we can be the vessel that God has called us to be. It's Proverbs 16 verse 3, which is commit to the Lord in all that you do so that he can establish your plans. And I keep repeating this scripture because this is the essence of what we want our godly winter arc to be. You have to seek God's kingdom so that you can make intentional moves. I'm gonna kind of give you a step-by-step -step of what we need to do. So the first step is going to be, oddly enough, because I'm telling you to do so much, spiritual rest and renewal. Ah! So I know that the winter time is typically a time that you wanna slow down, be present with your family and enjoy the holidays and all the things. I know that this is also a season that we tend to go, 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 go. I know that you're getting a lot of information thrown at you these days about winter art, 75 hard, this and that. You, you, gotta, get on, you gotta get on your Zoom and all the things. And so I wanna make sure that I invite you and put you at ease a little bit over here on this side of the internet by saying that that it is okay to rest. And I'm talking to me too. I feel like I am always on the go and I don't even have time to process the next thing that I need to do. To be still and rest for at least 24 hours. In Matthew chapter 11, verse eight, it invites believers to rest in Jesus alone. I know that we spoke in the Godly Winter Arc part one, that it is so important for us to have a routine and to build holy habits on those routines, making sure that every morning or every day that you have some time with just him. But what I mean by rest, literally laying down and doing nothing. And if, even if it's just you meditating on his words and listening to just calming music and drifting off to sleep from there, I 100% recommend doing that at this time before we start doing all the things that require you to have a successful winter arc. Set up a spiritual retreat at home. You need a weekend of just you, your Bible, and rest. That's it. Sometimes, sometimes, I will fall asleep sometimes reading the word and it just almost sets the tone for like the dreams that I have and like the things that I'm thinking about while I'm reading and like just imagining what it looked like back in those times where Jesus was around. And so anyway, that's just a side note. Last thing for this step, when I say rest and renewal, I also mean fasting. Fasting and prayer is going to be a way that you, you gain that spiritual discipline that's gonna fuel your journey in the winter arc or even just with your fitness and health journey in general. All right, step two, and of course you know I was gonna say this, your morning routine. We have to realize that our morning routine is crucial to any part 
of a health and wellness journey because it is your chance to set the tone for your entire day and even the week. I notice personally, if I do not set myself up for success on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it just kind of goes by the wayside. By the time Friday comes around, I'm just like, okay, I got to get it back together, but it's the weekend. So I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to relax. I'm going to have fun with my kids and my family. So it's so important for you to set that tone every single day so that you can have a successful week, month, year. Here's how we're going to structure our morning. Wake up early. And I'm talking 5 to 5.30 window. If you wake up even earlier than that, kudos to you, honey. At this time, this is not about productivity. This is going to be about making time for God. Start your day in quiet and stillness. Then you can go ahead and ease into your day. Make sure before you get up to go to the restroom and drink your water and brush your teeth that you have at least 10 minutes of prayer or gratitude. In this prayer, you're asking God to order your steps throughout your day and inviting him into your space so that you make the right move with every person you encounter. After that 10 minute mark, you're gonna take 20 minutes to do a Bible reflection or a Bible study. I personally like to follow a Bible plan when I do this. There's plenty of them on the internet. There's plenty of uh, people who provide Bible plans. I know for She Reads Truth Bible, they charge, I think, $1.99 a month, I think. I can't remember, um, for their Bible plans. And they're really, really good Bible plans. And then, of course, you have the community that, that's there. We did 10 minutes of prayer. We did 20 minutes of Bible study. And then the next step under this is going to be five to 10 minutes of journaling. Write down what you've learned in these Bible scriptures or this devotional or this Bible plan. Write down the people that you need to pray for or pray over for the day, for the week. This is another part of those a holy habit stacking that we talked about in the last video it also focuses on what your focus should be on for the day. Moving on to step three. Step three is going to be the holy habits. In the holy habits video, we just talked about the importance of creating these habits and stacking them so that they align with your faith and long-term goals. So you've done all of the meditating on the word and your quiet place and all of that first thing this morning at five o'clock. Now that we're going to transition into the start of your day, remember, we are stacking upon different habits that we already do naturally throughout the day. So around 7, 7.30, you're going to go ahead and do your daily worship. The point of all of this is for you to take a break during your morning, keeping yourself spiritually centered. Next thing that you're going to do is a scripture memorization. So from your Bible study, maybe there was a scripture that stood out to you. This is the perfect opportunity for you to go ahead and memorize that one scripture. It can be super easy. It can be super hard. But as you're worshiping and, and listening and being in the presence of God, the best thing that you can do is start learning his word and what he says in the Bible. This is gonna be a habit that will transform your mindset. If you do this every day by the end of winter, you'll have the Bible memorized, honey. Most importantly, you'll have scripture and the power of God in your heart. A scripture a day keeps the demons away, okay? By eight o'clock, if you don't start working until let's say nine, by eight o'clock, you can be out of the house and doing a prayer or holy girl walk. Do this for 30 minutes in the morning. Incorporate that movement and faith. And this is the perfect opportunity for your prayer list to come into fruition. This is the time for you to say, hey, who is on that prayer list? Who do I need to pray over today? Do I need to also pray over myself and my mindset and my spirit and my thoughts? This is the perfect time to do that, okay? Merge the physical and the spiritual so that we're not sluggish and lethargic during this winter time. So we've gotten our morning routine. We've come back after our prayer walk. Let's just say you gotta go ahead and get ready for work and be there by 9, 9.30. Step four is going to be setting faith-focused goals for 2025, 2026. 2027. This is the perfect time for when you get in your car where you have solitude to think out loud. Drive to work and start setting those goals even if they're in your mind, even if you have to get a voice memo to do so. I say all that to say this is the time where you're going to use the winter arc to reflect on the goals to make sure that these said goals are aligned with God's purpose for you. Going back to what we said about that time alone, the rest and renewal time that you need to set yourself apart for next year. So here's a simple process that we're going to use in order for you to set the goals with faith as your foundation. What you're going to do is pray over it, okay? I know we're saying we're praying a lot, but you need it. 
you need the prayer, sis. Okay? Pray for the first couple of minutes as you're talking about these goals. Next thing I want you to do is write SMART goals. So we specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. With S, specific, you have to to be clear. Be clear on what you want to accomplish in this time. Be real with yourself. It's growing in your spiritual life or even advancing your health. Be clear and specific. M, measurable. Find different ways to track your progress. I said this in the last video for our holy habit stacking. You have to find either an app or a journal or just something where you can see visually of what of the progress that you're making. If it is memorizing a verse every week or every month, do that. But track that progress so that you know where you're heading. A for achievable. Make sure these goals are attainable and they are in the season that you're actually in. If you're juggling family, children, spouse, work, church activities, content creation. I really need for you to set some realistic expectations. You cannot do it all. Remember the first step in all of this is to rest and kind of recharge yourself for this time. You do not want to be in a situation where you're going down this rabbit hole trying to keep up with all the things just because you want to say, that I did the winter arc or I lost 50 pounds or I did 75 hard. Who cares? Who cares if you can't sustain this? So be realistic with yourself and build upon where you are. As for relevant, your goals should align with your spiritual walk. So ask yourself in this SMART goal, does this bring me closer or further away from God? And does this truly fulfill my purpose on earth? Last one is T, time bound, your timeliness. Set deadlines for everything that you do during this time to help keep yourself accountable, especially if you don't have a trusted accountable partner and it's just you and God truly, I need for you to be accountable for everything that you do. Obviously, give yourself grace when life lifes or if things take longer than expected. We're trucking along, honey, we're trucking along. Okay, step Five, step five, evening reflection and renewal. So you've done all the routines in the morning, did your, your little workout session for your prayer holy girl walk, and then you did your smart goals throughout the day while you were at work. Now it's time to wind down the day and kind of get you transitioned from working and stressing out and practicing those holy habits throughout the day to getting your yourself home, getting prepared for your nighttime routine. How you end your day is just as important of how you begin your day. So let's talk about a wind down routine that's realistic for you and what you have going on in your life in a way that's gonna honor God and wrap this day up in a bow and sets you up for a peaceful, night's rest. Step one in your evening routine is going to be reflection and gratitude journaling. This is going to be a little bit different from your morning journaling just because you're kind of setting the tone for the day. You're praying for individuals. You're praying for yourself and what you need to get through. But in the evening, what are we grateful for? Are you grateful that you didn't go off on your boss today? Progress over perfection? Write down your gratitude from the day. Did you see a prayer come into fruition that you had from earlier on in the day? What did your day look like? And write it down in your gratitude journal. Your evening routine after you have had a full day of work, this is the first thing that you're doing. So we aren't working out first. We aren't going to the gym first. We are coming home and we're doing our gratitude journal. After you do your gratitude journaling, what you're gonna do is pray for five minutes. Again, lots of prayer, you need it. I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Sit in his grace, sit in those thoughts on your gratitude journal and pray about the end of the day by giving all of your burdens and cares to him. Move on to step six, which is community and accountability. Now I understand that a lot of people don't feel comfortable having accountability partners because sometimes you don't trust everybody. This step is important uh, to your growth cycle. Um, not to just this season, but it is going to be important for you to have that community and have your person there that will help hold you accountable when you fall short or if you have any blind areas that you need to address. Most importantly, your spiritual goals. What is going to be to join a Bible study or join a prayer group. These groups are going to offer support for you, encouragement and accountability. So having another person come in and pray for you 
especially if you're pouring out to everybody else, it's it's top tier. And step two, it kind of goes in with step one, is to finding this accountability partner and reaching out to this accountability partner, virtual text message, phone call, coffee shop, after work, so that you can to share this progress, to bounce ideas off of each other. So step seven is taking care of your body. As Christians, our physical health is tied to our spiritual well-being. So lastly, let's go ahead and talk about how to maintain a balance because fueling your body with nutritious food and water is honoring God. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of water and eating balanced meals and not just snacking as soon as you get home. All right, and then of course, step two is gonna be exercise. So you're gonna exercise for at least 45 minutes for your evening routine. But let the goal be at least four to five times a week that you work out and do this evening routine. You only get one body. Come back home, get yourself a nice, healthy, balanced dinner and your snack to congratulate yourself for having a great day. This winter arc is more than just setting goals and reaching them and setting new goals and forming new habits. It truly is about growing closer to God and finding that peace in his presence. And obviously setting a strong foundation for 2025. If you plan on doing the Godly Winter Arc, let me know below. Or if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends so that they can also benefit from having a godly winter arc. Let's walk through this season together and trust God in all things that we do. Love you. See you next time.